Today on Home Theater Fanatics, we're going to install the Xbox Series X in our two-channel media room. After a long wait, it's finally time. That's right, Xbox time. The Xbox Series X has finally dropped, uh, along with the PlayStation 5, uh, and you know it's time for the feeding frenzy of, of Xbox content. Um, and there's a bunch of reviews out there and all that kind of stuff. And we'll we'll go through in this video a setup of the Xbox. But I want to look at how to get this Xbox really integrated into an HDR environment, right? So um, I've got a Vava Ultra Short Throw Projector. It's 4K, does HDR10. And I've got that sitting behind a Denon 4400. Now, the question is, is it easy to get the Xbox Series X to play HDR, especially for gaming, right? That's the whole point because it rocks um, with the Vava uh, because this Vava is super cool. If you haven't seen that, go check out the videos on the Vava. Um, it is a great ultra short throw projector. So playing games in 4K HDR 10 at 60 frames per second, pretty sweet, especially when you're doing it at 100 inches or 150 inches. Now the question is though, is it easy to set up? So let's get started. We're gonna run through the setup. I'll talk you through that so you know what to expect and there's an app now too. If you didn't know about that one, yeah, there's, there's an app for your Xbox that you load on your phone. Um, kind of interesting, but you'll see that as we go through this. And then at the end, we'll see, did HDR magically turn on or is there more work to do? So let's go ahead and get started and step through things and see how easy it is to get this super high-end experience going in your environment. I actually like the packaging of the Xbox Series X, especially compared to the original Xbox One, um, it's very elegant. You know, you open it up and bam, there there it is, right? It's, it's kind of cool, it's all angled. Um, you can pull this thing out, there's foam to protect it. And then there's a big box that's got all of your bits and pieces in it. And that's really kind of it. Um, if you remember in the past, there'd be like lots of little cubby holes and stuff where things got stuck. Uh, this is a lot easier to deal with. I mean, you really just cut that tape, pull it open, grab the Xbox, grab the box, and inside of there you'll find uh, your HDMI cable, a power cable, and then a basic controller. And uh, you got batteries for that controller too, runs off a couple of double A's. Uh, I really highly recommend picking up the Elite 2 if you can. Um, they've got the extra triggers on the back and they come with a charging base and the button knobs are all uh, interchangeable so you can customize those. Uh, it's just a really, really, really nice controller. Now, the unit itself is about as utilitarian as you can get, especially if you compare it to the PS5, which is like an alien artifact spaceship that's crashed down to Earth. This is a black cube rectangle box, right? It's, uh, it, it is not special at all, um, but it gets the job done. Now, connecting this thing, super easy. HDMI, power, ethernet, and then if you have controllers that uh, need USB connectivity for power, you'll plug those in as well. Um, there's also a storage expansion slot on the back when you get to that kind of upgrade in the future. Things are getting exciting now. So it's all plugged up. Uh, you hit that power button and boom, it starts up. Um, you know, you can you can feel, feel like you're getting there. It's, it's doing stuff and it's almost ready. Now, remember I told you there was an app for this? Well, make sure you've installed the app on your phone because it's going to ask you to go ahead and pair this app with your unit. So it'll flash up this set of, I think, 10 numbers, and then you have to type those into your phone and it will pair it uh, with your new Xbox Series X. It's kind of interesting. I've not seen this before anywhere else. Uh, and it's, it's not difficult, but uh, you know you have to copy those uh, identically. And it's kind of hard when you have a camera and then you're holding a phone in front of the camera and you're trying to focus the camera on the phone and look at the, the screen behind you to get the numbers off. But once you figure that out, uh, you just uh, join that up uh, with Wi-Fi and it, it'll do everything for you, right? So it really simplifies the process of getting the app on your phone connected to the Xbox and then the Xbox on the internet at your home. Uh, so when you're done with that, you're, you're kind of good to go from a connectivity point of view. Um, it's going to ask you a few questions that you'll answer and you can follow along and see those here. Now, once you get that all completed, the onerous process of updating begins. This takes 
a while. I cut out a ton of update time uh, to keep this video short, but you'll sit there and it'll turn along, turn along, turn along, update, update, update. Um, you can focus your camera if you'd like to, to make things visible and clear for everybody watching the video, but uh, that'll happen in the background. But you'll go ahead and choose your power mode with your phone. Um, and, you know, I wanted everything to just kind of work and I'm not too worried about trying to save all the power. Um, so I did the instant on. Uh, you know, if you want this thing to really be dead, uh, you can go ahead and do power saving. Um, but I elected to uh, be a little not so green and, uh, you know, try and trying the coolness with the, with the instant on. Uh, then you get some security questions and also following the path of least resistance, I chose no security um, and then I let it automatically sign me in and get updates whenever it wants to. Now this cool feature of, of remote control allows you to do things to your Xbox with your phone when you're not there. I don't know if there's a lot of value, but heck, why not? Let's do this thing. So now we're getting really, really close to knowing if HDR and all the cool video features are going to be functional. So not too much longer before we get the final news. Um, but you know, you still have to let them take your data and all these other things that, you know, basically says, read this and say next. Uh, so there's not a huge amount of choice there. You can name this thing anything you want to. So for folks that have eight different Xboxes in their home, I guess uh, you'll want to be able to distinguish them because you have an app for that now, right? If you had a Xbox before, you can copy the settings over from the cloud, which I did. And then after that, man, this bad boy is done. Is it really? Well, let's find out and see what happens on the screen. No, it is still updating. You, the update, like I said, takes a long time. So all of that stuff that we went through on the app to get this thing set up, uh, it was cool because you didn't have to wait for the update to finish on the box itself, but the update still has to finish before you can move on to the final steps. All right, the updating is done, but guess what? There's more. Now you need to connect your controller. Uh, it's like the, uh, the fun never ends with the setup of the Xbox. So it will put this uh, button dance on the screen that you need to follow. So you'll hit the Xbox button, then it'll ask you to push the A button and then you gotta figure out all this stuff, right? So just uh, follow the on-screen instructions and push the buttons as it asks you to push the buttons and life will move forward and be happy. Now, after you do that, guess what? Your prize, more updates. So you have to update that controller. Now, if you have uh, the Elite 2 controllers, which actually is what they show on the screen and not the basic controller, how funny is that? Um, you'll need to update those as well after you connect them once everything else is done. Um, I don't show that in the video, but uh, it's not a hard process to connect additional wireless controllers and go through the update. Now, update's done. They want your money. You can say no. Um, it will check your TV settings and it found 4K and I accepted it. Now, the question is, how about the HDR? So you scroll over to settings. Once you get into settings, you're gonna take a look at the TV and display options and it's gonna tell you what's up, right? So in here, you could set this away from 4K UHD if you wanted to. I don't want to, um, but I wanna look at the details and wah, wah, wah. All right, so something obviously is wrong. Uh, we've gone through this whole setup. Uh, you've got an Xbox plugged into your Denon 4400 or whichever AVR or processor that you have. Um, and then that is plugged into your television. And for me, that's a Vava, but something's not right. There's not a setting that's correct. So let's dig around and look at settings in the Vava and the Denon that might impact things. The most likely culprit is an HDMI setting in either your television or your processor. For us, let's take a look first at the VAVA. And if you go down to the HDMI 2.0 settings, you'll wanna make sure that those are turned on. Uh, now you'll wanna look for something analogous to this in your television, but make sure whatever HDMI advanced settings are available, that those are turned on, or sometimes it's called an extended setting. Now we're gonna go over to the Denon AVR and it's going to have a similar setting that you need to look for. 
In the Denon AVR, you're gonna to wanna to jump over to your video settings and then down to the 4K signal format. In here, you're gonna find a setting where you can change it from standard to enhanced. Um, enhanced is what's going to allow you to have the higher quality video pass through. So find out what setting your processor has that is the same as this and make sure that's turned on. Okay, now that we've got those settings changed, let's jump back over into the Xbox and see if it recognizes the HDR10 that's coming across the wire. And it looks like we found it. So if you're having this kind of problem uh, where your Xbox and your television and your AVR aren't playing well together, go look for those settings and I think that might get you where you need to be. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you'll be notified when new content drops. And I'd also like to give a shout out to my patrons on my Patreon page. Thanks for subscribing to me via Patreon. I really appreciate your support. It makes these videos possible. And hey, if you wanna be cool and you're not yet a patron, please jump over there and check it out. The link is down below. Now, I'll leave you guys with probably the worst lap ever uh, in Forza. So check this out and uh, enjoy. Thanks for watching the video, everybody.